Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Last week we were looking at prophetic words to do with the birth of Jesus in the prophecy of Isaiah. This week, Christmas week, we're turning our attention to the New Testament and seeing what that has to say about the incarnation of Jesus. And uh, yesterday, just towards the end of the program, Colin, you were talking about Simeon, how he prophesied that Jesus would be a light to the nations through his people Israel. And he had a word for Mary too that reminded us that we cannot separate the birth of Jesus from the cross. And uh, Paul likewise links both the birth and the cross together in Philippians chapter 2. We saw at the beginning of the week that when we look at what uh, the New Testament says about the birth of Jesus, that the whole concept of humility is very, very important, very central to the whole revelation. And Paul says in in Philippians 2, verse 5, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, so Jesus was by nature God, the Son of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. He came as, well, first of all, the seed of, that was planted in the womb of Mary. And from that seed, the baby grew, and the baby was born. He made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. He came in humility, not as the triumphant king. He would come in that way when he comes again. But he came as the humble servant, being made in human likeness, sharing our humanity, sharing our weakness, being tempted in every way as we are. And then you see, he became obedient to death, even death on a cross. As we saw all last week with the prophecies of Isaiah, and as we saw yesterday, you can't run away from the fact that in Scripture, the birth of Jesus and the death of Jesus on the cross go hand in hand. You can't understand one without the other. The one who died on the cross had to be born as a baby to share completely in our humanity. He had to identify with us completely so that we could identify with him on the cross and know that we were crucified with Christ and that we could then identify with him in his risen life, knowing that we can share in his risen life now because he came to share in our human life then. So... He, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now, he was obedient. Do you remember I said that there are three things that I thank God for? I thank him that he, that I particularly thank God for about Jesus. First, that he was prepared to humble himself and become man. Secondly, that he lived in perfect obedience, even though he shared my weakness and was tempted in every way, just as I am. Thirdly, that he sacrificed his life for me on the cross so that now I can participate in his risen victorious life. And I believe we all need to thank God in those three ways. Because, you see, having been obedient in giving his life as a sacrifice on the cross, the scripture says, therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And you know the amazing thing, Julia, is that that little baby 
that was born to Mary, that little baby that Simeon took into his arms and prophesied over him. That little baby is the one who is now seated on the throne in heaven, reigning in majesty, glory, and honor. The lamb that is worthy, the one who is worshipped as holy by the whole host of humana, uh, whole host of heaven and all in humanity who know and love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. That little baby is now the object of our worship. Yes, he was worshipped by the shepherds, by the wise men, even when he was a baby. Prophetic acts of what was to come. But now that little child that in humility was born, in obedience he lived and died, that is the one we now worship as our Lord, our Saviour, our King. It's wonderful, wonderful, isn't it, how God has outworked his purpose. And one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, even those who reject Jesus will be faced with the, with the evidence, with the truth. Because there will be the judging of all humanity. There will be the resurrection of the righteous and the unrighteous. But of course for some, that will be a glorious time because it will be the entrance into the eternal glory of God for which they have longed. For others, of course, it will be a time of judgment and of condemnation because they had not put their trust in the Lord Jesus as their Savior. They had rejected him instead. And we can't run away from the fact that that little baby is the one who has the right to judge because he became a baby, lived as we lived, lived obediently, lived victoriously, gave his life in obedience, overcome death through his resur overcame death through his resurrection. So he is the one who, having identified with us completely, has the right to judge us. And this is why God the Father has given all judgment to the Son. We could say, well, yes, God the Father could judge us, but then he's never been one of us. He doesn't know what it's like to be weak like we are. But you see, we can't say that of Jesus. He humbled himself and came to share our weakness so that now he has the perfect right to judge us because he's done what none of us have done. He's lived the perfect, obedient life, perfect in his obedience to the will of his Father. But because of that sacrifice on the cross, even though we do not live in perfect obedience, we have forgiveness of our sins through his mercy. So for all those who believe in him as their Lord and Savior, there is the salvation of God. There is the hope of eternal life with God forevermore. And that's a sure and certain hope, an inheritance that Peter says can never perish, spoil, or fade. So that is our lot, if you like. That is our expectation. That is our destiny as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And all that comes out of the fact that God became man in Jesus Christ. If anything's coming out of these programs, well, a lot's coming out of these programs, Colin, but I think in particular the fact that we have to put the life of Jesus in context. You said repeatedly over the last couple of weeks, you know, we have to look at his birth and we also have to look at his death. The two are inseparable. Well, they are, because what we're talking about is the purpose of God. Mm. Why become man unless he was going to be the savior that would make it possible for us to be restored to relationship with God? Remember that God created man to know his glory to be at one with God in his glory, but all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So God had to supply a way of salvation to restore mankind to the glory of God, which was always his intended purpose. And so we, we see in Jesus that that purpose has been fulfilled. 
And you, you know the scripture says that we have been crucified with Christ, we are raised to a new life with him, and God sees us already seated with him in heavenly places. He sees those who believe in Jesus already in the glory. That, if you like, is a prophetic thing because, you know, we're still here on earth. But God sees us where we belong, seated in heavenly places because we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. All made possible because he humbled himself. And, you know, I, I sometimes look at the way some Christians manifest such pride um, even and, and self-righteousness I, I find things like that so difficult because if you know the Lord Jesus I mean really know the Lord Jesus you dare not lift your head in pride you dare not take to yourself any of the credit for what he has done but you want to give him all the glory all the honor and praise not only for what he has done for you but what he does through you. Even though God may perform miracles and bring other people to the Lord and enable you to bear much fruit, all the glory goes to him because it is the work of his spirit in us and through us. And Jesus said, when you have done everything that you should, you are still unprofitable servants. And that's what we are in ourselves. But praise God in Christ, we are seated in heavenly places. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 